So once you've sort of figured that out, then you have to decide what is the population you're interested in. Is it, you know, uh, basically everyone? If it's a human universal, then you can oftentimes just study it in college samples. Uh, or is it something that might be unique to specific groups? And in that case, are you interested in just women, just men, the elderly, the young, uh, the mentally, uh, uh, psychologically disordered, the gifted, single mothers, whatever it is? And uh, then, of course, you can't ever select everyone in that sample, or everyone in that population, rather. So you have to draw a hopefully representative sample, uh, which is basically just a smaller collection of individuals that capture the diversity of the population itself that you're interested in. So when we describe people, here's just some different terms that we use in psychology to denote between samples and populations. Whenever we're talking about statistics having to do with just samples, we always talk about those as descriptive statistics. So these are things like means and standard deviations. And in this case, we always just use uh, uppercase English alphabet letters. So uh, mean is typically abbreviated as M, uh, as standard deviation as SD. But what we're always interested in, even though we can't calculate it directly, is in population metrics. In this case, they're called parameters. So whenever we're talking about the mean of an entire population, which of course we can't uh, directly measure, but we can infer from our sample, we tend to talk about that in terms of, um, well, we still call it a mean, but basically in terms of the Greek lettering mu. Uh, same thing with standard deviation, we tend to typify that with the Greek lettering of sigma. So it's one of those things that, and we don't tend to talk about this as much in psychology, but it's something to keep in mind that what we're always trying to do with our sample is to represent an entire population. Uh, in other words, we're using our descriptive statistics to try to infer population parameters and whenever we write about that directly, we tend to abbreviate it with Greek letters as opposed to English letters. And the thing we, we, or the statistics we use to do that, to infer population parameters from descriptive statistics, are called inferential statistics. They're called that because basically we try to infer what's going on with the population from a sample. So whenever we're talking about a, a significance test, a t-test, f uh, test, which is a factorial ANOVA test, uh, confidence intervals, Anything like this, basically anything that's not just describing a population or sample, it's likely to be an inferential statistic when we're dealing with psychology. And again, we use these statistics to see, well, how uh, well does our sample probably represent our population? So if, for example, let's say that we create a, a score of extroversion from 1 to 10, where 10 is highly extroverted, 1 is not at all extroverted, you know, very, very introverted, and we say, okay, we have two groups, one from the east and one from the west. You know, let's say that from western sample, we find people on a 6 out of 10 in extroversion. What we can do is use some inferential statistics like confidence intervals to say, well, okay, since our sample is based on, let's say, 1,000 people and pretty, pretty well sampled, uh, we can be pretty sure that the population parameter of extroversion is somewhere around that sample mean, well, in that case, with confidence intervals, we can say with 95% confidence, for example, that maybe we, we would infer that the population's actual extroversion is somewhere between a 5 and a 7 for the Westerners. And uh, let's say we collect an equally good sample of Easterners, we find that their um, score is like a 3 out of 10 in extroversion, and we find them significantly less extroverted. Then again, we would use those confidence intervals to, to infer, basically inferential statistics, to infer that maybe their population parameter is 95% sure it's between a, you know, two and a four, for example. So in that way, we're using our samples means to try to infer through confidence intervals in that case, uh, the population parameters. And again, we'll never for sure know the population parameters because we can't, you know, collect the entire population and measure them. Uh, but we can use those inferential statistics to get a good guess at what they probably are. In that case, since the two population parameters don't interlap or overlap, they're significantly different. So, and that's another example of an inferential statistics talking about significance. So just as sort of an overview of what we do in science, especially psychology, is we try to discover something about the population by drawing a sample from it. So we, we draw a sample from a population, and then we get things like their mean and standard deviation and relationships between variables in that sample. And then we use inferential statistics like significance tests or you know, confidence intervals to try to infer whether or not that's also true in the population. So in this sample, we, let's say we find a difference between Easterners and Westerners in average extroversion. If we do a significance test on it and we get a p-value of 0.05 or below, 
then we say we're 95% confident that this same difference would be found in the population. If we had sampled every Easterner and every Westerner, that we would still find this uh, difference. So that's sort of the whole picture of you know what we use samples for and also what we use inferential statistics for. It's always to try to infer something about the population with you know some level of confidence. Usually 95% confidence is what we're shooting for. So sort of the, the whole picture is that we select a population that we're interested in. And again, if the population is universal, then you can kind of sample any group of people out of that. But if the population is more specific, like Westerners, uh, women, the elderly, then you want to sample a pop, uh, or sorry, sample, get a sample that's representative of that population. And then using that sample, you're going to analyze them statistically and then using inferential statistics like p-values, t-tests, uh, ANOVA or confidence intervals, trying to sort of make your best, most educated guess as to what's really going on in the population. So it's sort of like we're, we're beginning and ending theoretically with the population, but all we really can deal with statistically is the sample.